There's so many ways to explore the topic of language. You mm. called it, you said that language is parts of language or language in itself or the mechanism of language is is, is a kind of living life form. Mm -hmm. um, you've tweeted a lot about this in all kinds of poetic ways. Let's talk about the computation aspect of it. You, you, you tweeted, the world is not a computation, but computation is our best current language for understanding the world. It is important we recognize this so we can start to see the structure of our future languages that will allow us to see deeper than the computation allows us. So what's the use of language in helping us understand and make sense of the world? I think one thing that I feel like I I notice much, much more viscerally than I feel like I hear other people describe is that the representations in our mind and the way that we use language are not the things like Actually, I mean, this is an important point going back to to what Girdle did, but also this idea of signs and symbols and, and all kinds of ways of separating them. There's like the word, right? And then there's like what the word means about the world. And we often confuse those things. And what I, I feel very viscerally, I almost sometimes think I have some kind of like synesthesia for language or something. And I just mm -hmm. like don't interact with it like the way that other people do. Um, but for me, words are objects, and the objects are not the things that they describe. They have, like, a different ontology to them. Uh, like, they're physical things, um, and they carry causation, and they can create meaning, um, but they're not they're not, they're not, not what we think they are. And, and also, like, the internal representations in our mind, like, the things I'm seeing about this room are probably, you know, like, they're small projection of the things that are actually in this room. And I think we have such a difficult time moving past the way that we build representations in the mind and the way that we structure our language to realize that those are approximations to what's out there and they're fluid and we can play around with them and we can see deeper structure underneath them that um, I think, like, we're missing a lot. Yeah, but also the life of the mind is in some ways richer than the physical reality. Sure. So what's going on in your mind it might be a projection of right. actually here, but there's all, also all, all kinds of other stuff going on there. Yeah, for sure. I love this um, essay by Poincaré about like mathematical creativity where he talks about this sort of like frothing of all these things and then like somehow you build theorems on top of it and they become kind of concrete. But like, and I also think about this with language. It's like there's a lot of stuff happening in your mind, but you have to compress it in this few sets of words to try to convey it to someone. So it's, it's a compactification of the space. Um, and it's not a very efficient one. Uh, and I think just recognizing that there's a lot that's happening behind language is really important. I think this is this is one of the the great things about the existential trauma of large language models, I think, is the recognition that language is not the only thing required. Uh, like there's something underneath it. Uh, not by everybody. Can you just speak to the feeling you have when you think about words. So is there, like, what's the magic of words to you? Is it like, do you feel it? It almost sometimes feels like you're playing with it. Like, Yeah, I was just gonna say it's like a playground. But, but you're almost like, uh, I think one of the things you enjoy, maybe I'm projecting, is deviating, like using words in ways that not everyone uses them. Like yes. slightly sort of deviating from the norm. A little bit. I love doing that in everything I do, but especially with language. <laughs> but not so far that it doesn't make sense. Exactly. So you're always like tethered to reality, to the norm, but like are playing with it, like basically fucking with people's minds a little bit. I mean, like, you know, uh, and in so doing, creating um, a different perspective on the thing that's been previously explored in a different way. Yeah, it's literally my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Like, use words as one way to make people think. Yeah. So I, you know, a lot of my sort of like what happens in my mind when I'm thinking about ideas is I've been presented with this information about how people think about things. And I try to go around to different communities and hear the ways that different, whether it's like, you know, hanging out with a bunch of artists or philosophers or scientists thinking about things, like they all think about it different ways. And then I just try to figure out like, how do you take the structure of the way that we're talking about it and turn it slightly 
Uh, so you have all the same pieces that everybody sees are there, but the description that you've come up with seems totally different. So they can understand that there's, like, they understand the pattern you're describing, but they never heard the structure underlying it described the way that you describe it. Is there words or terms you remember that uh, disturbed people the most, maybe in a positive sense of disturbed? Is assembly theory, I suppose, is one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the the first couple sentences of that paper disturbed people a lot, and I think they were really carefully constructed in exactly this kind of way. What was that? Let me look it up. Oh, it was really fun. Um, but I think uh, it's interesting because I do, uh, you know, sometimes I'm very upfront about it. I say I'm going to use the same word in probably six different ways uh, in a lecture, um, and I will. You write, scientists have grappled with reconciling biological evolution with the immutable laws of the universe defined by physics. Yeah. These laws underpin life's origin, evolution, and, and the, de this with me when he was here too. the development <laughs> oh God, the of human culture. Well, he yeah. was, I think your love for words runs deeper than these. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, this is part of the, the sort of um, brilliant thing about our collaboration is... Um, uh, you know, complementary skill sets. So I love playing with the abstract space of language and it's a really interesting uh, playground when I'm working with Lee because uh, he thinks at a much deeper level of abstraction than can be expressed by language and the ideas we work on are hard to talk about <laughs> for that reason. 